we're going to be looking at vectors, adding vectors, subtracting vectors and resolving vectors. The scalar quantity only has magnitude, whereas a vector quantity has magnitude and direction. And when you add or subtract vectors, you need to take into account the direction, unlike for scalar quantities. If we were to add a 4 Newton force that acts to the right, with a 3 Newton force that acts to the left, the resultant force, which means the overall force or the net force, would be 1 Newton to the right. However, if we had a 4 Newton force and a 3 Newton force both acting to the right, the resultant force will be 7 Newtons to the right. If we had a 3 Newton force vertically upwards and a 4 Newton force to the right, then what would be the resultant? Well, we would get the resultant by completing a rectangle and the resultant will act along the diagonal. And we would use Pythagoras to work out the resultant force F. So that would be the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, which will give us 5 newtons. And the direction will be an angle, which we're going to be measuring the resultant force from the horizontal. And we need to use trigonometry to determine this angle. And we're going to use the tan term because tan of theta will equal its opposite, which is the 3 newtons, divided by the adjacent to the angle, which is 4 newtons. So theta will equal the inverse tan of 3 divided by 4, which is 37 degrees. So for this case, the resultant force is 5 newtons, at an angle of 37 degrees from the horizontal. Alternatively, you can draw a scale diagram and measure the resultant force and angle theta. And for a scale diagram, you need to do a head to tail drawing. So if we say one centimeter represents one Newton, so we'll take our four Newton force acting to the right and draw four centimetres and then where the four newton force ends we'll take add the next force which is three newtons vertically upwards and because it's three newtons you will draw line that is three centimetres so we started here and ended here so the resultant force links from the start to the end and if you used a ruler to measure this line you would get five centimeters to represent five newtons and you could use a protractor to measure angle theta that the resultant makes with the horizontal and you should get 37 degrees now, if we had an initial velocity of 3 meters per second vertically upwards, and the, then the velocity changed to 4 meters per second to the right, and you need to determine delta v, the change in velocity. So that is the final velocity minus the initial velocity, we would need to do a vector subtraction. So we have V, which is 4 meters per second to the right, minus U. So a minus 
where a vector means in the opposite direction. So we'd represent minus u as a 3 meters per second, but acting vertically downwards. So we started here and ended here. So the change in velocity is from the start to the end. And so we can determine the change of velocity using Pythagoras, and that will give us 5 meters per second. Now, if you have to find the resultant of two forces, but they were separated by an angle alpha, which was not 90 degrees, then you would need to use the parallelogram rule. And that is, you would draw a parallelogram. And so the resultant will act along the diagonal. And you would need to use the cosine rule to find the resultant force F. So in this case, our triangle is 4 newtons here, 3 newtons here, and F. So A is the F, B is 4 newtons, C is 3 newtons, and the angle A is the angle that is opposite line F, so it's this angle here, which will be 180 degrees minus alpha. So F squared will equal 4 squared plus the 3 squared minus 2 times 4 times 3 times cos of 180 minus alpha. And we'd use the sine rule to find angle theta, and that's the angle the resultant force is making with the horizontal. So sine of theta divided by the length it's opposite to, which is 3 newtons, will equal the sine of 180 minus alpha divided by the line the length is opposite to, so that's F. And if alpha is known and F is known, you can then work out angle theta. Alternatively, you can draw a scale diagram and measure F and theta. And again, that's using the head to tail. So if we use a scale diagram where one centimetre represents one newton, so we'll draw a line four centimetres to the right, representing our four newton force. Then we'll need a protractor to measure angle alpha. And from angle alpha, we will draw a three newton force, so a three centimeter line where the four newton force ends. And so the resultant will be from where we started to where we ended. So that'd be Sultan F, which you can then use a ruler to measure, and then you can use a protractor to measure angle theta that the resultant force makes with the horizontal. Resolving vectors is the opposite of adding vectors. So if you have a force F at an angle theta, and we resolved it, it means we're breaking down this force into two components that are at right angles to each other. And usually we're looking at the horizontal and vertical components. So for this force, it has a horizontal component to the right, and it has a vertical component upwards.
And in order to find the horizontal and vertical components, we would use trigonometry. So if h and theta are given, and we need to find a and o, to find a, the adjacent component to the angle, because we've got h for the hypotenuse, we will use the cos term. So cos of the angle will equal a, the adjacent, divided by the hypotenuse h. So the adjacent will equal the hypotenuse times cos theta. To determine the opposite component O, we will use the sine term. So the sine of theta will equal the opposite O divided by the hypotenuse H. So O will equal H sine theta. So a rule to use is when it's the adjacent component, we use the cosine term. And when it's the opposite component, we use the sine term. If we had a 5 Newton force acting at an angle of 37 degrees from the horizontal, and we needed to resolve this force into its horizontal and vertical components, so it'll have a horizontal component to the right and a vertical component upwards. To get the horizontal component, because it is adjacent to the angle 37, we use the cosine term. So cos of 37 equals the adjacent, which is FH, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 5 newtons. So FH equals 5 cos 37, which is equal to 4 newtons. To determine the vertical component, FV, as the vertical component is opposite to the angle, we use the sine term. So sine of 37 equals the opposite, which is Fv, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 5 newton. So Fv will equal 5 times sine 37, which is equal to 3 newtons. So before, you may remember, we added a 4 newton force to the right with a 3 newton force that acted vertically upwards to get a resultant force of 5 newtons acting at an angle of 37 degrees from the horizontal. And so you can see by resolving, we've done the reverse. From that resultant force, we've broken it down into its horizontal and vertical components of 4 newtons and 3 newtons. Now, if we had a force of 5 newtons, that was acting at an angle of 37 degrees from the vertical, you can see that the horizontal component is to the left, and we've got a vertical component upwards. So now to get the horizontal component, because it's opposite to the angle 37, we would use the sine term. So sine of 37 will equal the opposite component, FH, divided by 5 newtons. So now FH will equal 5 sine of 37, which is 3 newtons. And the vertical component, FV, is adjacent to the angle. So we will use the cosine term. So cos of 37 will equal the adjacent, which is FV divided by the hypotenuse, which is 5 newtons. So Fv will equal 5 cos 37, which is 4 newtons.